Yep, saw it. All right, welcome back everybody to our 38th Luxury Lunch and Learn. Michael Lofito here on this, I guess I'm losing track of dates and times. Today's Wednesday, the 12th of August, 2020. Some days with uh, COVID-19, you forget what day of the week it is, and it certainly doesn't feel like August already. Really looking forward to uh, having today's guests on. And, uh, you know, we do a lot of trainings. We go across the, the world, and we go to a lot of these amazing conferences. And uh, very, you know, very few of my guests go to more conferences. But, Joseph, I do believe uh, you might be uh, one of my few guests that does attend more events and and we'll talk a little bit about uh, what are you doing to stay sharp during, you know, this unprecedented time where limited travel. I know you've done some travel recently, but uh, I'm excited to have the Vice President of Better Homes and Garden Real Estate, uh, Joseph uh, Magsaisai here. Uh, how you doing? I am doing fantastic. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me, Michael. Um, Mike Lafito. Um, I always tell my friends that when you invited me, I know this, this is like weeks and weeks of preparation. And by the way, kudos to you. First of all, I know that it, sometimes your your busy schedule, my busy schedule, and Joseph, when can we do this? But thank you so much for your patience. We're finally doing this. It's such an honor that uh, you know I'm, I'm one of your guests you know episode 38 right well there's a third this is our 38th luxury lunch and learn we launched this joseph on uh, april 10th and we we wanted to figure out a way where we could bring uh, top luxury contributors top luxury agents uh influencers that have the finger on multiple pulse, pulses different markets if you will on best practices and uh, you are th our 38th. So we started originally every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and we did that all of April, all of May. And, and then okay. June, we went on a three week vacation. So we backed off a little bit. Now we're doing about once a week. Uh, and we're going to continue on because the feedback's been uh, very positive. Mm -hmm. Great. So tell everybody a little bit about uh, you're, you're based in the St. Louis market. Tell everybody a little bit about you and you have multiple hats uh, as, as not only an agent, but also within uh, Better Homes and Garden. Absolutely. Well, um, you know, um, I'm here in St. Louis, Missouri as, as the vice president for business development for uh, Better Homes and Garden Real Estate for, for Properties. You know, one of, my, one of my hats is basically to attract very good agents, very talented agents, right? But at the same time, I'm also the CEO of the Impact International. So I have a team of amazing 20 realtors who, you know, whose who's, who's, um, who's mission, okay, is to impact as many lives as possible to help families achieve their American dreams of ownership. That's awesome. You have 20 agents on your team, you said? Yes, 20 agents on my team. Very blessed. Um, we have this family vibe, family culture, and, uh, you know, I'm very blessed to have a solid team, solid, solid team. And of course, I'm also very blessed to be part of uh, real uh, preferred properties, you know, because our leadership is just phenomenal. Amazing support from broker owners, you know, Charles David and Laura, Charles Davis and Laura Davis. And, um, you know, to be able to work with people like them, with leaders like them, I'm learning from them each and every single day. And the beauty about that is while I'm learning from them, then I get to, you know, apply, like you said, best practices on my right. own team. Yeah. And talk, talk to me a little bit about um, Better Homes and Garden. Better Homes and Garden obviously is a great brand. Uh, I, I believe it's uh, the real estate been, been 12 or 13 years. Is that about right? Yes. Yep. And, about. and talk to me a little bit about, um, you know, where, where were you at before better homes and garden and, 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 and brag a little bit about, you know, the support and, and why, you know, we have different guests with different brands, whether they be with a franchise or independence. Yeah. Um, yeah. Talk to us a little bit about better homes and garden. Absolutely. No, he, here's, here's the thing. I've been with, with several companies and uh, the beauty about Better Homes and Gardens is that it's a lifestyle brand. 
at the end of the day, you have a very powerful leader, such as our CEO, Sherry Chris. You know, are arguably the, uh, the most powerful women in real estate, the best female leader in real estate. And because of that, because of her leadership, now you have these franchise owners who are learning from her. You know, Laura Davis and Charles Davis, my, uh, my broker owners, like what I mentioned earlier, uh -huh. the support that they give each and every one of us is invaluable. And again, going back to what I said earlier, we are a lifestyle brand. You know, what that means is that, you know, for example, we have several divisions. We have, we have the distinctive collection, and then we have the urban division, and we have the lake, you know, we have the resort, we have the farm. So I'm very pleased, I'm very happy to, you know, when Laura approached me, I was really impressed with what Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate has to offer. And yeah. plus, who doesn't know Better Homes and Gardens? You know, um, you ask, you ask your grand, your mom, they know about Better Homes and Gardens. And, you know, we're getting younger and younger because there's a perception that Better Homes and Gardens is only for older people. And I disagree 100% because majority of the millennials, believe it or not, like 90% of women, female millennials know about Better Homes and Gardens. So our reach, we have a big reach. Yeah, and, 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 and you mentioned the, the distinctive division. That is uh, what Better Homes and Garden calls their luxury division, correct? Our luxury division, yes. Distinctive yep. collection, yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. And, and, and tell us a little bit about the St. Louis market. Um, you know, I'm, I'm hitting you with some statistical questions, and you might not know the exact answer, and that's okay. But what would the average... Uh, sale price be approximately for a single family home in you know the, the st louis area i throw that i know that's big i know uh, i know it's big so so with that question are you talking about luxury or non-luxury non-luxury average sale price sure non-luxury so here's here's the funny thing the the market in st louis is strong right now so months ago the average is like in the 200 but now it's going up to 25 to 30 for the non-luxury ones. Now for the luxury ones, depending on what pocket are you, depending on the zip code, it could be anywhere between 750,000 to 1.2 million, mm -hmm. you know? And, and um, the, the perfect analogy that I could give that, you know, I always use New York because I love New York, right? Yeah. So we have our own Manhattan version, okay? We have our own um, Hamptons version. We have our own Brooklyn version. So it really differs. You know, there are some pockets that the average 1.2 million, like what I said earlier, others are 750. And um, in, in St. Louis in general, just like other companies, us included, some, you know, base a $750,000 home, the benchmark, the minimum to be considered as a luxury home. But in my own opinion, sometimes you need to go over a million to be considered a luxury home. Yeah. So, yeah, and, and that's one of the questions we always ask our guests, especially guests that have a leadership at, at a brokerage level, uh, because Joseph, um, every brand defines luxury differently. Sometimes it's price points. Sometimes there's a calculation involved. Yeah. Uh, you know, for our uh, lux designation, we define luxury home pricing as three times, excuse me, three times the average sale price for that given market. You know, so you might have a, a suburban market of Indianapolis. Uh, you know, we did a, a training with Matt Fagioli from the Explode Conference um, way back pre-COVID-19, and the average sale yeah. price was $80,000 in that market. And I had an agent come to me and said, I was hesitant to come to your training today because we don't have million-dollar homes in our market. But based on your multiplication of three, 80 times three, we certainly have a lot of 250s and threes and fours and yeah. even fives. We just don't have a million. So luxury is all relative. Do you know by, by hand the calculation that Better Homes and Garden uses to calculate whether something, whether a property uh, qualifies for your distinctive uh, collection? Yeah, it's pretty much like what you said, it varies by location. So in our location here in St. Louis, you know, at least for our office, and I know for a fact that other brands, their benchmark as well, like 750. Okay. So, so like, you know, based from the math, like what I said, 225, 220, you said three times, right? Yeah. We're in that 750 price range. Perfect. 
you know so it's yeah. pretty much the same as 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 your evaluation yeah very good by the way um i, I might have to create a poll out there uh, and i have to look to see but uh, between you and craig hogan uh, it's really craig hogan who runs uh, global luxury for coal banker it's really close to determine the best, the sharpest dressed man in real estate. Um, so I might, I might have to create a, to, to get the audience participation. That might be fun, but uh, both who, wore it, who wore it better? Who, who wore, wore it better? It? There you go. <laughs> this is okay. I mean, Coal Banker, as you know, you know, we're one under one umbrella, Realogy, you know, we, we're a cousin or their brother. Yep. And uh, that's great. No, no, I, that, that's, that's but, absolutely right. But here's the thing also, Mike, um, here, here's the thing, when it comes to luxury, when people ask me, yes. so how do you define luxury? I always say luxury is a feeling, okay? That's why I love that with Better Homes and Gardens, we call it distinctive collection, okay? Because mm -hmm. we have distinct properties, we have a distinct network, we have mm -hmm. distinct relationships. Mm -hmm. And that's what really appealed me, and that's why I joined Better Homes and Gardens, I was really impressed um, because right now anyone can can wake up and say, you know, okay, I'm a luxury agent and in this area, this is what we do. This is already considered luxury. But with Better right. Homes and Gardens as a whole, for distinctive collection nationwide, there are lots of unique properties out there that, you know, th that we represent the sellers so we help them sell. You know, especially in Florida. Oh my God, properties over there. My uh, my colleague, one of my best friends with Better Homes and Gardens, Joy Truglia, her uh, her properties in in Florida is they're just amazing. I mean, just like yours, uh, the mansion that you posted this morning, that seven point oh, five million dollar mansion. Yeah, yeah, gorgeous. Yeah, no, I, I'm I'm really excited on that one. We're going to be shooting photos and video on Friday. It's got the Italian, you know, you know, some people call it more Spanish style, but but the owners have, you know, it, it, with the verandas, it reminds you of something straight out of Italy, Tuscany. Uh, we're going to have fun with that video shoot. Uh, come Friday, I'm going to bring my boys over there and uh, we're going to highlight some of the verandas and the pool and uh, the hot tub and two and a half acres. And, um, it's, wow. it, it's, uh, it's definitely a distinctive uh, property for sure. Yeah, and, and would be uh, in the distinctive collection. Um, so, you know, we get various viewers uh, from different parts of the country, different brands that are looking to increase their average sale price during COVID and beyond. Um, you know, how did you break into luxury, if you don't mind sharing? And what words of advice would you have for those agents or brokers or team leaders that are looking to break into luxury for their given market? Yeah, so, I mean, at, at the end of the day, our vision changes, right? It's our, our big why changes and believe it or not this is this is only my sixth year in the business oh my goodness this is my sixth year in the business and very blessed in this business it just so happens that your your uh, your priorities changed and i woke up one day and said you know what i want to have a piece of the pie in the luxury market and you know sometimes when when you decide to do that you know, you need to be all in because there will be a lot of investments involved. You need to have the right partner, meaning you need to have the right lender partner who will, who also represents a lot of luxury clients mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, relationships is very important. Mm -hmm. Okay, same thing with non-luxury because when people always ask me, Joseph, what are your top two secrets in real estate? So there are no secrets in real estate, but this is what I can advise you. You master relationships and marketing and you'll be set for life, whatever business you're in. Okay. However, you, they need to be married together because you may be good at building relationships, but you don't market yourself or no one knows that you're a realtor or you, no one knows that you do luxury real estate. No one's going to use you or you're so good at marketing yourself, but no one wants to work with you because of your character. So it needs to go hand in hand. So that's why my advice, okay, number one, you, you need to be all in. You need to ask yourself, how bad do I want this? Because luxury homes, they don't sell as quick as non-luxury homes. Sometimes you need, depending on where you are, you need to wait for three to six months before it sells. 
Sometimes you need to wait for six to 12 miles or even longer than that. So you need to be prepared. You need to be able to uh, figure out, okay, where are you gonna hang out? You need to be surrounded by the right people. You need to be surrounded by the right establishments in order for you to succeed or be effective as a luxury real estate advisor. That's, that's great, great advice. So relationships. Um, All about relationships. Yeah, you brought up relationships. That's really important. Uh, you know, I was going to ask you and something not else. That. Sure. No, no, go ahead, please. Okay, uh, because one of the things also, I made sure that I had a mentor, okay? Because it's, it's very important that you are that you idolize someone. And I already told you this. I mean, in my eyes, you're like the Michael Jordan of, of a luxury real estate. And oh my goodness. Yeah. It's so nice of you. Michael Jordan's my, my sports and, idol. And I was <laughs> Of course, Chicago, right? Yeah. But when, when I met you for the very first time, I've, I've heard your name, I've followed you on social media, and then it just so happens that you were at uh, the Day Par Awards. Yes. That's where I met you for the first time in Dallas. Yeah. Or close to Dallas. Yeah. And that, oh my God, I'm in front of Michael. And then we and, and then we connected. You know, yeah. if if I if if that introduction was not made, or if you and I did not have, you know, that same energy that evening, mm -hmm. you know, there would not have been a follow-up. And everything is very important. The energy is important. The relationship is important. And that's the reason why we're here face to face because, yeah. because of that meeting. Yeah. Okay. So it's very important to have a mentor because you will always be one of my mentors. But here in St. Louis, I had a mentor who, who taught me and uh, I learned a lot from, uh, from these different realtors in town who does luxury, who does very good in the luxury world. No, that's, that's great advice. Uh, having a mentor, you know, there's some amazing resources out there. There's tons of free groups. This is a free training right now where you're learning from, uh, you know, the top luxury team, team leader guy in the St. Louis market. You know, he's doing some amazing things with the properties that you position down there. Um, so I, I, I love seeing what you're doing. Uh, you know, accountability, iron sharpens iron, you know, you know, the, 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 the high tide, you know, pull, pulls up the rest of the ships, right? And that's what we're doing, raising the bar. Absolutely, and, and this is what I tell my, um, my other colleagues from different companies, right? I always tell them, look, you know, at the end of the day, real estate is all about collaboration and not competition. You mentioned um, sharpens iron, okay? So I love having them as my other MLS, because they will have their own coming soon. Mm -hmm. They will have their own market properties. And if you want to be effective in your business, you need to be able to position yourself and tell your clients, tell your buyers, tell your sellers that, you know what? The MLS system, yes, there are properties over there, but they are not only the properties out there. I have access to off-market properties because of the relationships and the network that I have with other agents. Yeah, and, and you bring up a good point that I want to uh, compliment you on as well. I do feel like real estate, uh, it's getting, in one sense, I feel like it's getting better. On the other sense, in some ways it isn't. But I feel like real estate agents uh, sometimes are very competitive and they have a scarcity mindset. In other words, my brand is better than yours or you're with yeah. that brand. And, you know, I want to compliment you because I know you're so well liked and respected throughout the industry. And, and you don't like we were at the, the event in February that wasn't for Better Homes and Garden, but you're mm -hmm. well liked and, and loved no matter where the brokerages are. And that's mm -hmm. a testament to your character and, and you're willing to help and grow and lead with a giving hand versus uh, having a scarcity mindset. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so talk to me a little bit about, um, you know, here we are, August. Um, what are you doing a little bit more now than maybe last August or, or pre-COVID-19 on some of your high-end and luxury properties? Or what are you planning on doing uh, that perhaps COVID-19 has, uh, you know, has forced you to do or, or you just morphed and, and adapted 
and have found to be, you know, this, this is something I should be focusing more on to, to get some of these difficult or distinctive uh, properties uh, you know, noticed. Right. So, well, well th I, I really love that question. Okay. I'm, I'm going to answer this in a, on a team aspect. Okay. Because mm -hmm. I will never forget when COVID hits and then shutdowns here, shutdowns there, restrictions here, restrictions there. Right. right. And some, some of my agents, especially the newer ones, you know, they were panicking. Okay. Well, what are we going to do? You know, the lead flow, it's very slow and, and things like that. And I, this is what I told them, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm borrowing this from, from Lee Brown. I'm sure you know Lee Brown, mm -hmm. our friend Lee Brown. And she always said is that real estate is more than houses. Real estate is more than selling houses. Okay, because we are community leaders. A true definition of a realtor is someone who's involved in their community. Okay, someone who cares about their community. It's not all about the commissions, not all about selling houses. It's the relationships that you have with your community. So since my, t uh, my team name is the Impact Team International, we created um, a pseudo, when I say pseudo, because it's, our, my plan is to make it official soon, you know, and like a nonprofit organization. So we created Make an Impact One Plate at a Time. Okay, and, and, and as I go forward and saying the story, that would answer some of your questions later on. But make an impact one plate at a time. We realized that, you know, restaurants needed help. We realized- so Did you say one plate, P-L-A-T-E? Correct. Make an impact one plate at a time because of restaurants, because yeah. of food. Yeah. And during that time, restaurants are shutting down or just do curbside and they right. also need help, right? But at yeah. the same time, our frontliners, our nurses, our doctors, Okay, who were slammed, you know, when, when it, because of COVID. Um, they need food. We, we felt that we needed to be part of the community, we needed to be involved, and we needed to give back. We're very blessed in this business that now it's time to give back. It's time to show the public that we care about our community. So every week, we fed a minimum of 150 uh, nurses. We order from a different restaurants every week, and uh, we, we, we had affiliates who were supporting our costs to be able to afford the food that we order that we give to, to the nurses and to the frontliners, to the doctors. So that's what we've done, right? Now, because of that, rela new relationships were formed. You know, CEOs of the hospitals, HR departments, you know, giving us a phone call, thanking us. So guess what happens? Guess what happens because of that? You know, it is, everything becomes organic. New doctor comes in, here comes the HR department. We need a realtor. Remember that realtor who, who took care of us during COVID and things like that. So to me, that is very, very valuable. So as far as, you know, you asking what difference that we, what was the difference between this year uh -huh. August or this year and last year was that we are being more organic this year. We value relationships more this year compared to last year because last year was all about numbers. Boom, 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 boom. How many closings do we have? What's on our pipeline? Don't get me wrong. We'll still do that, especially for me, but I need to be more intentional when it comes to building relationships with these people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Man, 150. That, 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 that's, that's awesome. Yes. And I, I'll never forget. So there's this restaurant here, Vitality Bowls. And I became friends with, with the owner. Now we're, now we're best friends, really, because, because of COVID. Hmm. Okay. So I, I'm a very positive person. So when people say, oh, it's doom and gloom, COVID, I, I saw an opportunity. I always see an opportunity. And I said, okay, this means there are more people that we can help, more people we can help, the more relationships we're gonna build. So Great. if you go to Vitality Bowls right now, they have this big screen and photos of us delivering food to the hospitals, photos of us picking up the food from Vitality Bowls, you know, and, and <laughs> things like that. So that, that to me, 
that is priceless. That's because awesome. the feelings that the people felt, yeah. that will never be forgotten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I forgot who it was once said, you know, people will forget what you say, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. Yes. Yeah. You know, and so that's, that's, that's amazing. Talk to me a little bit about, um, do you bring Gino to any of these um, photo shoots or uh, <laughs> yeah. anything like this? Yes, you know, the Gino, well, first of all, thank you so much for mentioning Gino. You, uh, it, 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 we've known each other for a couple of months and you know a lot about me already. I love that. You're, you, yeah. you did your homework very well. Very good. Oh, I, no, I, I love, I love how you're so supportive at his baseball games and everything. Yeah. And no, so, uh, so important. Gino, Gino is, uh, he's, he loves real estate, but he won't admit it. And the reason, <laughs> the reason why I say that, because Gino loves copying me. He's eight years old right now. He's turning nine in a few weeks. But um, when he was three years old, this is what I will never forget about Gino. We went, to, we went to Target. And he was wearing his PJs. You know, me being a dad, you know, you're okay. You're good to go with your PJs. Right. Three years old. And then there was this lady who approached him and said, you are such a cutie pie. And Gino being three years old, the very first thing that he uttered, he said, thank you so much. By the way, my dad's a realtor. I know you know someone who wants to buy or sell house. Oh my he goodness. And then when he said that, the lady said, oh my God, my sister's looking for a house may I have your business card. And deep inside me, I said, oh, you're just saying this because you're, you're hitting on my son and you want to have a small talk. Right. So I gave her my business card. 30 minutes later, someone called me and said, your son just sold you a home. I'm looking for a house. My sister met you and your son's adorable. I want to meet your son. And ever since, okay, I created a hashtag for Gino. It's called Gino Knows. Uh -huh. And uh, just, just because of his knowledge about real estate, so that's how Gino Knows was born. And he's ha he has always been part of, you know, my, uh, my marketing. And I bring him sometimes. Once I establish the relationship with my clients, I ask yep. them, hey, may I bring Gino. And now Gino, he knows the difference. I mean, he sees quality. Sometimes when I, when I tell him, okay, we are seeing a home, he's going to say, Daddy? Is this a luxury home or a non-luxury home? Every time we go out of town, we go to we 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 go to hotels, right? We check into hotels. His question immediately, Daddy, is the hotel a medium or a good quality one? Is that oh, I don't know if I created a monster, right? But <laughs> he knows he knows good quality ones. So. Yes, he's got great taste. Yeah, no, I love him. He's my big why. Yeah, absolutely. He is my big you know, yesterday I had a, 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 a we've had a couple photo shoots. I'm selling this uh, a good friend of mine's uh, dad's horse farm. It's on 38 acres. I brought my one. I invited both my boys. Uh, one didn't want to go, so my one son came with me, and he got to ride the four wheeler around and loved it. And then I had another photo shoot, and we had to take some measurements, so he went with me. And and uh, all three of my kids will go to that uh, 7.25 million dollar video shoot. And uh, you know, I mean, I'm trying to, um, yeah, a couple things there, right? It's, it's always fun to, to, to incorporate your kids. Um, mm -hmm. And so they know what mom or dad does for a living, but they can appreciate what you do. But also they see hard work, you know, hopefully pays off, right? I mean, I'm a big believer yeah. in earned, not given anything in life and no handouts, right? You got to earn things. And uh, and so I'm hopefully ingraining that in, into uh, them uh, by the way they see my work ethic and, and what we do. Um, and I'm, I'm sure Gino uh, is, can appreciate that as well. Yeah, so when, when, when COVID happened, so Gino, he saw me for the first time do, uh, what do you call that, uh, the Zoom listing appointment. Okay, sure. And I scolded him because he, he was noisy and I said, can you, I said, Gino, can you go down in the basement, go to the basement, Daddy has a listing presentation. Sure. And, and he said, oh yeah, no, that's the reason why you're all dressed up. And during that time, my listing presentation, um, because it was a referral and the referee told the potential client said, you will love Joseph the way he dresses. I said, oh. And this person, this person said, okay, I have to be impressed on how Joseph looks like on Zoom. And this is like um, a million dollar buyer. 
Uh -huh. so, since everything was so serious because of the pandemic, I decided to, you know, lighten up a little bit. So I was wearing a suit. However, I was also wearing shorts. It was my short suit. And when the Zoom started, I zoomed in first my shoes and then, oh my God, all I see is legs. What is going on here? And then my shorts and everything. And then, ta-da, my name is Joseph. And uh, you're, you know, I just did my thing. Yeah. So Gino yeah. saw me doing Zoom a lot for, uh, for buyer's consultation, for, uh, for listing presentation. And uh, when they lift the... Uh, uh, the lockdown, in place. you know, yeah. I shelter in place. I, I started, I started doing, um, I started doing homes via Facebook Live for vacant homes. You know, it's easier to do that for vacant vacant homes, and it's it's safer. Right. You know, but yes. So, yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, uh, again, some words of advice for those that uh, have kids. You know, I mean, don't use your kids as a prop by any means, but if you can incorporate your kids into what you do for a living, um, naturally, uh, you know, they're gonna learn and it's gonna be a win-win. So, um, Gino, I love what you're doing. Excuse me, uh, Joseph, I love what you're doing with G Gino yeah. and I uh, love how you support him in baseball and everything else, uh, uh, duly noted, I, I, from one parent to another. Yeah, I mean, by the way, since you called me Gino, they already call, people already call me Gino's dad. So, instead of Joseph, <laughs> hey, oh. Gino's dad. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. Well, hey, if somebody's got a, a referral in the St. Louis market or they want to find out more about um, you, what's the best way for somebody to get in touch with you, Joseph? Yes, my cell phone number. Okay. Right. Call, text me, 314-337-4413. And also my Facebook, Joseph Mag Sai Sai. And then my Instagram handle, the Joseph Magsaisai. Those are the, the three main things. You can easily find me. Perfect. And then the, on the replays, I'll, I'll post those in the, uh, the remarks sections as well. Uh, good. Well, hey, listen, you are doing some amazing things. I love your enthusiasm. I love uh, how you are a marketer and you're creative and uh, you're not afraid to put yourself out there. I tell real estate agents, shy real estate agents, have skinny kids. In other words, you know, you can't be shy in this industry. You got to be willing to step out of your comfort zone right. and uh, raise the bar. So you, you exude that. So I appreciate uh, what you're doing. No, no. I mean, well, once, once again, you are one of my mentors. You're one of my idols. And this is, this is one of my, uh, one of the highlights of my, of my year, you inviting me, you featuring me, you know, as, as one of your guests, and uh, I really meant it when I say you're, you're the Michael Jordan of, uh, of luxury real estate. But here's the thing also, Michael, one of the things that I like about you is that, you know, you and I both know, and, and I don't mean to be disrespectful, you know, for um, other uh, luxury real estate agents out there. But the beauty about you is that you are one of the most accommodating luxury real estate specialists that I know because... Sometimes luxury real estate agents, they have a reputation. Oh, they're not approachable. They're not accommodating. They look so intimidating. I'm even scared to ask a question to them, you know, if I'm not really in the luxury, but I want to learn a little bit. But for you, you have opened the doors, okay, for aspiring luxury realtors out there. You are one of the most inclusive luxury real estate people that I know, you, you're not exclusive. You are very inclusive. And I love that about you. I have mad respect for you because of that. Well, well, thank you. Yeah, I was a former high school health and physical education teacher and came from blue collar. So, you know, my background is, is, is give and there's a lot of agents in luxury that, that you know, they, they're raised in, in those white collar neighborhoods and those gated communities. And, and there's nothing wrong with that by any means. But I, I agree with you. There are a lot of 
uh, I'm not going to mention her name, but there was somebody that was on a podcast once and, and uh, the host asked her a question and kind of razzled her, her a little bit and, and she was getting her hair done during it and it just came across as the stereotypical, you know, luxury agent and, you know, mm-hmm. we, we teach agent, agents all the time, be yourself, right? And, and that's why I'm a big believer in video, Joe, Joseph, because your authenticity comes through as does mine and just be yourself, right? People want real in today's day and age where there's a lot of fake news and fake people out there. Just be yourself. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and the good thing about that is that I don't have to fix my hair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I have to fix mine and my, <laughs> my greasy Italian forehead. But uh, now with that, Joseph, uh, appreciate all you're doing. Let's definitely stay in touch. And then when things loosen up a little bit and these conferences uh, start up, I doubt in the fall, but I hope in the fall, but mo- more like in like 2021, uh, you and I will you know, connect in person. But until then, let's keep, let's keep talking. We're going to be doing a virtual luxury designation training in September. And I'd love to have you on as my guest. Absolutely. I'm always here for you, my friend. Just let me know. And once again, it's such an honor. My pleasure. Grateful and blessed. Thank you. Grazie. Gra- grazie. You're Good welcome. Up. Prego. 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 My name is right. Giuseppe. Giuseppe. Uh, Guido. <laughs> Guido Lafito. <laughs> <laughs> That was my nickname. That was my nickname in high school. Um, a buddy of mine, Brett Ebel, his brother was at our football game. And afterwards, he said something like, oh, your, your friend um, Guido was really good. He's like, who's Guido? Well, he heard one of the parents yelling, Lafido, go Lafido. He thought he was yelling, go Guido. And uh, that, that nickname kind of stuck with me in high school. Uh, Guido, I don't go by it anymore. But uh, anyways, hey, make it a great Wednesday. Make it a great week. And as I tell everybody, especially I posted something today, love the neighbor, no matter if they're white, black, gay, straight, Republican, Democrat, whatever, love is love. And that's what I posted today, uh, something that I posted three years ago, Joseph. And especially during the elections when things can get get heated, you know, no matter how somebody votes, treat them as a human being, love them. I feel like there's so much divisiveness right now. And, oh, you voted for Trump, well, then you stand for this, or you condone this, or you voted for Biden. Let's remember, Republicans and Democrats and independents and socialists, for that matter, they buy and sell a lot of real estate. And like Michael Jordan once said in the documentary, it was brought up even in March, excuse me, in May, that the last dance, he said, Republicans buy sneakers too. Well, Republicans and Democrats buy and sell a lot of real estate. So let's unify versus divide. We are both you and I, as well as others watching this, we have a platform. And I do believe that when we pass away, uh, you know, on our gravestone, if it had the number of lives affected, and it was blank, I want my number of lives affected to be in the thousands. And I know you do as well, Joseph. So keep raising the bar. Appreciate all you're doing. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.